How's it going everybody? Casey with Schwat here. And I want to know what do you think about when you think about hunting? You think about a big trophy deer, a trophy elk, big old pile of hogs, a mess of dove, a mess of duck. Well, what I think about is I think about the story. I think about the experiences, the people that I'm with. And so I want to bring you that story today. So what better place to start than the people I had with me on this hog hunt? So first of all, there's this guy. This guy is Robert, and Robert's my brother-in-law. Now I don't think I'm supposed to like my brother-in-law, but for some reason I do. And lately we've been doing a lot of hunting together, so Robert got the nod to come on this hunt with us. Robert's an excellent hunter. In the last year he's hunted everything from alligator to duck, dove, sheep, deer, and of course, pigs. Now Robert grew up hunting and fishing. He actually grew up on a ranch and a farm, when Robert's not hunting, he can be seen doing this or this. That's right, he's a millennial. He is always on social media. And if you want to follow him, make sure to check him out here. So that leads me to the next guy. The next guy is Jared. Everybody loves Jared. See, Jared grew up in El Paso and he was the reluctant hunter. He did not grow up wanting to hunt or expecting to hunt. And his idea of hunting was sitting in a tree stand all day waiting for a deer that never showed. And then in his late 20s, early 30s, he got introduced to hog hunting and he has not looked back. In fact, Jared has gotten so good at it that he is now a pro staffer and a writer for Schwat. You can check him out on his Instagram here and you can read his stories on schwat.com right here. So make sure to check them out. And then there was me. You see, if Jared was the reluctant hunter, then I have to be the resourceful hunter. I didn't grow up in a hunting family or with any land to hunt on but I wanted to do it so bad and I poked and prodded my parents so hard that when I was eight years old, I finally landed my first shotgun. Check this out. This is me with my first shotgun at eight years old. And this is it. They don't make them like they used to. Uh, actually, they still make them exactly like this. So that was our crew for this hunt, but we absolutely have to give credit where credit is due, and that is to DFW Shooting Sports. JD and the boys down there absolutely made this hunt happen, and a lot of the gear that you'll be seeing throughout this video was either provided by DFW or purchased from DFW. So they're actually located in Bedford, Texas, and they are building a new shooting facility and gun shop in Grapevine. It's gonna be an absolute, unbelievable first-class facility. They'll have indoor lanes of 25 and 50 yards, and they'll have over 150, that's right, 150 fully automatics that you can rent. And a little birdie told me that in the very near future, they may be actually renting out thermals. And if you don't wanna rent it, they can obviously sell them to you. So they can handle all of your shooting needs. So make sure to check out DFW Shooting Sports. You can follow them on Facebook. You can obviously go to their website, follow them on Instagram, and keep an eye out for their new facility and range coming in 2019, the Texas Gun Experience. And with that, it's story time. Here's the deal. Mother Nature had delayed this hunt for over a month, and it was threatening to wreak havoc again. But with schedules tightening and the holidays approaching, we decided to take a leap of faith and hit the road. So the three of us skipped out of work early and headed west. Once we arrived at our destination, we made quick work of unpacking and then we hit the field to zero our thermals and we made pretty quick work of it. Once we were done zeroing, we decided to hit the field for some pre-hunt scouting. Pre-hunt scouting is an important ritual for us and we're looking for three things. One, signs of hogs. Two, which fields have cows in them. And three, we're keeping an eye out for any other structures or things that we need to notate during those daylight hours to make sure we have an incident-free hunt. Now, it did not take long for us to find an unbelievable amount of hog tracks. But the more we scouted, the more we realized just how wet this hunt was gonna be. In fact, over half of the fields that we normally hunt were absolutely covered in water. If you didn't know better, you would think that these were lakes or tanks. But we had made the drive, we had taken the leap, and we weren't gonna let that hold us back. So before we jump into these hogs, let's cut to the field so our hunters can give you a quick rundown of the gear we'll be running, and then we'll put down those hogs I know you've been waiting to see. 
Hey, it's Jerry with SWAT. We're about to head out for the night. I just want to run you through some gear, but uh, this is a, my brand new 300 Blackout pistol that I built. You can actually go to SWAT.com and check out the story. Uh, but just a rundown of the gear. Uh, it's a Seekins upper and lower and a Seekins rail. Um, we got the Lantec uh, bolt, the Radiant Arms Raptor uh, charging handle. Uh, we got a Wilson Combat eight and a half inch barrel. Uh, again, 300 Blackout, so it's nice and short, but it, I anticipate it'll be effective. And I got a, a little Timney trigger on here. It's a, a two and a half pull, I believe. Um, so excited about that. And then the gearhead work, tail hook mod two. And so uh, again, super light, super compact, uh, able to get in and out of the truck real easy without any issues. And then I'm running the uh, an AAC SDN6 as my can. And then of course, the thing that makes it all happen is the Pulsar Trail XP50, which uh, uh, I've been using for a little bit. Love it. Don't have any issues with it. Uh, I did just pull it off a my 6.5 Grindle, my Alexander Arm 6.5 Grindle, which I love. And um, But the cool thing about it is you can save multiple profiles on there. So but we're expecting a great night tonight. What's up, guys? Robert here. Just wanted to do a little rundown of the gear I'm going to be running tonight. Um, just to start off, I'm running a PWS 5.56. Um, it's the Mark One Mod 2. Um, it's a great gun we actually purchased uh, from DFW Shooting, um, so thank you guys for that. Um, we're also going to be running, as far as the optics, a FLIR 536. It is my first time running the FLIR 536, but I've heard a lot of good things, so I'm very excited to um, test it out. Um, and then, of course, the, uh, the uh, highlight of the action is this suppressor. It's a Silencer Co. Omega. Um, great quality product, um, and you know it keeps it quiet keeps the noise down so we can hunt from field to field. I have a PWS Mark II Mod 1, it's a 308 with a 16 inch barrel. Um, for my thermal, I am running the FLIR 536. So the FLIR um, was actually provided by DFW Shooting Sports, the Texas Gun Experience, for our hunt tonight. So we're really excited to, um, to get some more time behind this. This is my second time out with the 536 and my fourth time out with the FLIR. So um, I've been really happy with their products. And again, big thanks to Jared and the guys over at DFW for loaning us their uh, some equipment tonight. Um, the PWS, I actually um, purchased this direct from them. They uh, special ordered it for me. And then for my suppressor, I'm running a Silencer Co. Omega. And I have a um, dead air chemo mount on it. Um, so that's kind of what we're running tonight. We'll see how it goes and uh, see how many pigs we can put down. All right, so we hit the field and it didn't take long for us to see our first hog. So check out this boar here. He's about 20 yards off the road. Lucky for this guy, he was on the wrong side of the fence for us, but the right side of the fence for himself. Shortly after that, we ran into our first group. Same issue with these guys is they were on the wrong side of the fence, so we set up and waited for them to cross, and they finally did. Problem is, not all of them crossed. Two of them did. They got downwind of us. You can see them wind us here. So we decided to make quick work of these two and try to put them down. So me and Jared set up. We had a little bit of a miscommunication here. We weren't set up perfect. Mine went down. Jared's didn't. And because of the way we were set up, we couldn't put follow-up shots on them safely. So we decided to hold off. Here's another view. Here's Jared's view on the uh, Pulsar. Just wasn't a great job of communication on our part. You can see a perturbed Jared here as we get back in the truck. But we got our first hog for the night and then we quickly got on our second one. So here's me and Robert sitting up on a single hog. We double tap his butt. Let's give you a close up view from the 536 here. So bang, you can see him go down and he gives us the good old fashioned stanky leg. You gotta love it. So we're back in the truck and we're glassing. We are looking through that pulsar and we are trying to find some groups and our hard work paid off and we get ourselves into a big fat group. So check out all these guys just tearing up that farmer's field and it's time for us to uh, do a little bit of extermination. So we go ahead and sit up. Here's a view from the trail. It's a pretty cool view. Wanted to show you this. So you can see the mass chaos as they take off and watch this hog that goes off just to the right here. I want you to notate him. We're going to come back to him in a second. Now there's something I have to point out before I show you the shooting footage on that group from Jared and myself. You'll notice Jared here playing with the pulsar, trying to focus the image. Focusing the image isn't hard to do and it's especially easy on the pulsar, but for whatever reason this night Jared had a ton of trouble with it, so just know in real life that the footage from the pulsar is a lot crisper Five, than Jared's focusing four, ability makes it appear. Three, two, one. You can hear him counting down there for us. 
Now, you'll notice him pull over to the right. See this guy? One go. I am just off camera there. He went about a yard mm. to a yard and a half off my right here. So you'll see me pull off. I'm on this big board here on the right. And I hear some footsteps coming. You'll see right here. I about crap my pants. And uh, after I did change my pants, I flip back around and finish one off here. And we had another lone straggler that Rob puts a great shot on. So check this shot out. So Robert kind of has to reposition himself on the tripod here. This guy's pretty far out. This is a 4X on the FLIR. He gets his lead set up. Good shot. Puts him down. So we ran into another single after that. I went ahead and thumped this guy. I think we actually all three shot on this shot. Uh, so we just wanted to make sure they, uh, you know, we don't miss a single. That's uh, not a good use of your time when you're missing singles. So here's Robert. We run into another one and Robert drops this guy. Great shot. I think I actually shot with him. So here's another view of the same hog. You'll see him go down. Uh, nice and easy. No problems there. Here's another single that we ran into. I make short work of this one. And here's Robert and Jared. We run into one over by the uh, bar and you'll see them shoot perfect timing together in the Pulsar. And then here's Robert's view from the 536 as they drop that bad boy. So um, Jared was uh, rocking and rolling with that 300 blackout. So shortly after that, we run into another double with a group farther behind them. And this is pretty cool. So check this out. So they start shooting. It wasn't a great start on, on our part, but you'll see this guy get hit here and then watch this guy squirting blood on the right there. Oh, it's awesome. But anyway, they keep shooting on this guy on the left and look how tough these hogs are. I want you to watch this. Jared shoots that guy right in the face. He gets up and takes off. Robert's going to shoot, but he's thinking he's down. He gets up and takes off again. And then there's a house to the left, so he's got to stop shooting there. So he comes back to the right to check on this guy that was squirting blood, and he is up and moving. So let's watch how this transpires. It's just unbelievable how tough these animals are. That one's like dead though, wasn't it? You hear Jared say, that one was already dead, wasn't it? <laughs> Not so much. These hogs are tough animals. They hit him again right there. And then I think Jared was the one that actually finished them. So, we get into our last big group here. You'll hear Jared counting us down. He drops his first shot. You can't see it in the video, but he drops his second one. We come back over. These two drop down into a uh, into a hole. Here's Robert. Um, not a great shot on his first shot. And uh, this was pretty late in the night. I think Robert was having a little trouble focusing. So instead of picking one hog to stay on, he was kind of all over the place here. But he makes up for it by making a heck of a shot here at the end. So let's watch how this goes. You'll see him swing over to this guy, get a good lead, and he drops them. One. All right, so here's my view in that same group. I'm over on the right side of this group, so I put my first one down, get on the second one, drop that second one, and then I get two more out of this group. So they're running to the right here, and it takes me forever to put these two down. It wasn't the best shooting on my part, but I finally got them. So you'll see I'm shooting here. I hit the one in the back on that shot, it peels off. So I'm gonna leave the injured one, go for the smaller one here. So we ended up getting, I believe, seven total at this out of this group, which brought our total to 20 for the night. So not a bad night at all. And I finally finished this one right here. And then I swing back over to the left and pick up this big old sow that I previously injured and finish her off. But I want you to watch what happens in the communication that happens right after we finish this uh, pig. So good job on Jared's part. Listen to this. Hey, cattle, there's cattle to the left. There's cattle to the left. So you can see how those cows in the back left blend in with the hogs. And uh, you want to make sure that you're scouting ahead of time, scouting before you shoot, and you're communicating with each other. But there you have it, 20 hogs in one night. I'd say that's not too shabby, especially when you consider some of the weather conditions we were up against and that we could only hunt about half the fields that we normally hunt. So would you have done better? Probably so. Make sure to comment below. Let us know how you think we did. Let us know what you think about the video. Make sure you guys subscribe and stay tuned to SWAT because there's a lot more where this came from.